That would that'll be, that'll be fine. <laughs> like your heads are joined, joined somewhere. Um, first of all, let's talk about how you guys get into the, the, the film Summer Storm, uh, what, what the casting process is. Mm, okay. For me, I know Marco, um, should I hold it? Okay, uh, I know Marco since 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 five years, yeah, and like this, yeah. and we did and an two two movies uh, before Summer Storm, so for him it was really clear to um, that I will play Malte, and yes, <laughs> that's yes that's a simple story. <laughs> One thing that's interesting. One thing that's interesting about the character of Martin is that we're not used to seeing a kind of aggressive gay character. You know, I wouldn't say a gay bully, but a gay a gay guy who takes takes things into his own hands yes. and 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 confronts the heterosexual guys the way they normally confront the, the gay guys. Yes. yes, he always wants to uh, um, you know um, fetch somebody um, out of his um, how can I say it? Um, provozieren. Yeah, he's provocative. Yes, he's pro provocative the whole time, you know, the other person's, because he feels really comfortable with his sexuality. And so he goes straight to the other people and says, where's your problem, yeah. you know? Can, can you, what do you imagine his backstory being, his, his growing up being, as you were playing the character? What, what, yeah, right. Yes, I talked with Marco in front of We Shoot That Movie, yeah. and we talked about he's a Berlin guy, you know, inside the, the scene, you know, making, maybe he's a barkeeper, yes and dance in the night, and so it's really inside the nightlife of Berlin. That's the background of, of Malte. Yes. Um, what did you do to prepare in terms of the athletic stuff? Because uh, it is very athletic. I guess you guys had to work out quite a bit. Yes, we have. We have to, really. Uh, um, I, I have to go to, to the gym three months before, and I have to work on my body really hard. You know, right now all the muscle heels are gone, but yes, I have to work really hard on my body, yes. And it was, was a chance for me to get into the character of Malte. Because they, they want you to have your shirts off for like half the movie. Yes, of course, of course. And we talked about it, Marco and me. And I had, and I had another shooting in front of uh, We Shoot uh, um, Summer Storm. And so it was really hard because um, I did that movie in front of Summer Storm for two months. We, 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 we shot that movie. And I had a 10-hour working day. And after the 10-hour um, I'm shooting, I have to go to the Jim also, so it was really hard. But now, uh, describe uh, there's a sequence of scenes you have with the kid who's the quote, quote the homophobe, uh, the homophobe yeah. kid that you're always yeah. rallying. Describe that sure. how you, how you create that se that sequence because I think it's nice. You kind of lure him in by by the pretense that you're going to be his buddy, and you might you might actually sabotage the queer strokes group. But then of course you you yeah, do really do something tricky. else. Yeah, yeah, really tricky. I think it's it was a really nice idea from from the screenplay, you know, but. Uh, it was fun because because um, Marta always act like I want to have fun in my life, and so he tried to uh, um, get next to to Shoshi, the the homo um, yes uh, the homophobe guy, and it was fun in that moment. Um, he was really um, next to um, get him, yes. Um, even Marta gets a little bit nervous if yeah like. <coughs> So it was funny. This. Can you describe how, how you how you set those up with the director. I know it's in the script, but you can describe uh, what what the what the sequence, how you set them up. You know, to increase some the tension between those characters. Okay, can, can you say it again? Now, slow. How, how you how, describe how you set up that so that that you build that sequence where your relationship with Shasi develops yeah. and with the other actor and everything because yeah. I think it flows very nicely because we're not we're not given too much of a thought as to where it's going and then we're, we're sort of mildly surprised by it which is what we should be and yet it doesn't seem false talk a little bit about how you set that up um, yes some some scene I, I hope I understand your question right but some scenes in that movie were um, improvised but um, the, the scene between Marta and Shoshi, you know, they were really, um, um, right on yes, they were re really right on script. But um, with Marta, you um, always have uh, um, possibilities to act really, um, and he wants to do it, um, act really authentic. Like, yes, you have, you have a whole of, of um, li li um, liberty in, in acting, or is right, yeah. how you can explain it. Yes, and it was, you know. Um, Marco is always able to um, get out a really honest um, kind of, of acting, yes, and, and it was like um, I trust him in, in everything as a, as a director and as a friend, and so it was like 
Um, I felt really comfortable in front of the camera because of Marco and because of the cameraman. He's, he's a wonderful uh, um, cameraman, uh, Daniel. And so it goes really well. I don't know how I can explain it. But Another thing I liked was that the Queer Strokes group was kept together nicely in the film. It, you were your own camp. So there was a relationship between the various gay guys in that group. And there were various different types of gay guys, yes. which I liked. Talk a little bit about how that was achieved. It, it, it was really fun because because the whole cast lived together in a in a in a um, youth hostel or in a hotel, but it was like youth hostel, you know. It was really like summer camp, and um, and and after shooting, we were um, also or, or even split it in in the two camps, you know. And I even was uh, um, as my as as private. I um, I was um, you know the leader of the of the guys too. Yeah. So it was really fun. This was strange. What I liked about it was that they, they, there was all these distinct gay personalities. There was a guy who didn't want to be too queer. You know, was, thought you were yes. being too aggressive. Really there, there were the guys, the guys who weren't athletic at all. Why were they on a rowing team? Yes. And there was this. And there were all these different little subcategories, which yes. was nice. Yes, it was really nice. And 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 um, the characters in the in the in normal life and in the private uh, life were really different um, too, because. You know, the guy who played Leo was really is a really macho guy. You know, in the normal life, he's really straight, and it's yeah, he changes really in front of the camera. And is he the guy who had has sex with the, the with Toby? Toby yeah, yeah, who helped Toby with his yeah. coming out and right, yeah. yes, and he's a normal. He's a really macho guy. Yeah. I'm I'm not so <laughs> much <a> normal. <laughs> I wanted to talk to Robert about the, the Toby character, and I think it's a good, a good jumping-off point would be precisely setting up that wonderful sex scene that takes place between you and the Leo character. It really does work very well. It's like a high point of the movie because it feels it, it feels sort of accidental at the same time. It, it has a, a lovely structure to it. It's surprising in the physical moves and the emotional sense. Talk a little bit about how you guys uh, worked within the script and with the director to set that up. Well, that was really easy. I, I know Marlon, like the guy who played Leo for a long, long time already, and uh, we just basically, I mean, we weren't really nervous about him. We weren't really giving it, giving it a thought either. We just said, you know, we'll just, we'll just go and uh, like have sex, you know, and uh, we did it in, in one shot and we only did it twice. So um, it's, and it's, it was 14 minutes long and like the only guy who was really nervous about it was Marco. And he just, he just told us like kind of which movements he wanted, but like basically 80% of it was up to us so we it was just like you know you should you should face each other in the end and then come in like when you're sitting um, opposite to each other but um, the rest was just like you know we didn't really think about it we just started making out basically <laughs> <coughs> One thing I like, which I'm sure was, was set up in the script, of course, is, is the fact that Toby has been laying asleep out in the sun on that little on little pier, and he's gotten sunburned, which gives the Leo character an ability to be tender with him in a way that's not overly provocatively erotic. And that it, it's a nice jumping off point. Talk about the development of that idea from the script, and then how you manage to get into the, the, the more obvious sexual parts of it. Because I, love the, I just love the development of it. I see a lot of gay sex in movies, and it very rarely has that kind of feel to it. It, you know, which, yeah. which I think is so special. Uh, well, yeah, how do we go about that? Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we didn't, as I said, we didn't really, we didn't really think, I mean, it was in the script that I was lying there and sleeping, and the thing is that, you know, what was important for me was that, that um, you should get the sense of, of that first sensation when somebody touches you, you know, because Toby hasn't really been touched before even in like in an unsexual way even even if the the guy is just like putting some sun cream onto you um but you know he touches your your ankles he touches your legs and you're just like shaking because that's what you were longing for all the time and i think that that's really great in in, in the script as well that it, that it happens happens like that because that's the way sex happens as a teenager you know you, you, it just rolls over you you don't you don't plan that you mm. just you just start stroking each other and suddenly whoa and and the emotions go wild with you and you don't know what you're doing and you're just tight trying to like grab something and and yeah and then it's over already i mean that's that's just the way it is and that's what we sh what we try to do you know I have a sex scene which is not <clears throat> which is not beautiful but which, which is honest you know where you make wrong moves and you, you make wrong sounds and you, you you don't really know how to touch uh, the other guy and uh 
yeah, that's that's what I miss most in movies, and that's why I'm really really proud of that scene. I think we achieved something that's pretty rare in that in that scene. Yeah. And what's nice about it is it builds on the stuff that we've seen earlier in the movie with you and, and your best friend. And there's a kind of playfulness, and there's a lot of hijinks, pranky kind of playfulness. Talk about developing that relationship with that character because that's what allows the sex scene to be so powerful. Because we see Toby, you know, before in, in, in wanting sort of fumbling for something he doesn't even know about. Talk a little bit about how you develop that first set of relationships where you guys run together and, and play and jack off and all these different things, but they're all, it's just camaraderie. And then when it starts to get a little more serious, that's when things got really wrong. Well, that mostly came from Marco because, I mean, it's, it's his story and he told me about that stuff. I, n I never had a best friend like that, um, so I, I didn't really have experience with, with that kind of feeling. I mean, well, I had a very good friend, but I was older when, and I still have him, and uh, we lived together and stuff like that. So I had some, uh, I kind of s somehow had the sense of like being best friends close, close to like something else, you know. And that's that's what happened happens between Toby and Achim. I mean, not on Achim's side, but on Toby's side, you know, the moment where you realize that oh my God, this is not only a friendship. There's there's something more. And I remember myself like having, like having kind of crushes on on boys when I was younger, and uh, I. I didn't really like realize that it was a crush. I was like, I want him to be my best friend, and uh, which never happened. But you know, that's that's also a feeling I had. So I I kind of knew how it, how it felt to like, you know, have this 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 friendship, which is a little more than a friendship. And uh, yeah, we just tried to get along with that. Actually, I mean, it's, it's two years ago. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. Yeah, but that's basically it, I guess. Yeah, one of the things I liked about it, because I mean, when I was in college, I had the same situation. There was a slightly younger guy who I was had this friendship with at the college radio station. And I remember once for his birthday, I gave him an expensive watch and everything. And I started to dawn on me what I, what I felt, because up to that point, I hadn't been conscious of it. And there was, there was like a ceremony. And in the relationship that Toby has with Akeem, there's that, there's that point where they talk about that trip. You know, where, where they go go on this trip together, you know, and, and that it means a lot more for Toby than it does for Akeem. And I, and I like the way you guys played that. The yeah, well, I, I, know, I know that about, like, friends rejecting you. Um, I had, you know, I was always the guy who was like, you know, you have, you have friends and you would, like, whatever, have an appointment for the weekend and say, like, let's hang out this weekend. And they say, yeah, it's okay. And then on Friday night, they call you and say, like, oh, listen, uh, this other guy is coming over. I don't think that you can come tonight. So I knew about that. And um, that's just, like, the brutality of adolescence. I mean, this, this happens, like, all those different kind of things, like those politics nearly, you know. And then Achim, is, he starts to get scared that I could kind of like fuck up his his, uh, his his relationship to to Sandra, which I do eventually, um, and you know, and just like teenagers who don't who are not really aware of their feelings, they just do cruel, cruel stuff, and um, yeah. So basically, it was my own experience, and it was um, Costa's experience as well. Like the guy who played Achim, he also had stuff like that happening in his life before. Yeah, one of the things about Toby that I like is you never lose sympathy with him, but at some point he, he is so determined to pursue his own agenda that he can do things that are quite cruel, especially with, especially with the girls, basically. Talk about, but I like the way you developed those roles with the girls, too, because it felt, it felt right without being, you know, really horrible. He, at the same time, can be quite, uh, can be quite cruel and cold. Yeah, well, that's, that's definitely a, a thing that I talked a lot about with Marco, because it was definitely dangerous that you lose sympathy with Toby because he acts so selfish at, 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 at a certain point and he's so cruel to Sandra and um, yeah we had to like set set everything up like in the first I don't know half hour of the movie um, where Toby is a sensible really really caring guy and so, so you don't really lose to the sympathy as it when it comes to to the to those uh, certain moments where he just went, went uh, goes nuts and uh, yeah um, yeah, I mean that's that's Marco's work. I didn't do anything about that. I mean, I tried, I try, I try to be just like Marco told me. <laughs> <laughs> Not only this. Not only this.
Um, as, as, the, as the picture develops and you get into that sequence where you're, you're looking for uh, looking for first with Shoshley and, and then looking for Akeem in the woods and everything and, and the sky gets dark and, and you and really get a sense of you know danger out there. Talk a little bit about how those scenes were shot for the actors because I know you're, you're out there in, in the wild and everything and a tree falls and you know, all this stuff takes a lot of time to set up and execute on screen even though it takes only a few minutes of screen time, a few seconds sometimes. Talk a little bit about the development because it really helped a lot with our with our belief in, in Toby coming through at the end. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I mean, I see the storm as a catharsis in a way. It, like, it, it, it's like mirroring the, the the stuff that Toby has in his soul happening at the same time. And um, well, but as always, it's really really hard to work with all this SFX stuff because you have like wind machines and you have rain machines, and then you have to be emotional and 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 you're mostly concerned about your about being warm right now because you know. You try to get some psychological acting, but the thing that comes to your mind all the time is like, fuck, it's cold, fuck, it's cold, I'm dying, I'm dying. And then we had like, especially like in the storm scene, we had like helicopters flying above us. It was snowing the day before. It was really, really cold already. We were in t-shirts. Really and early it was just in the like, morning. Yeah, and it was the last day of shooting and I was yeah. really, I was, I was just out of my mind. I couldn't, I was like crying all the time. Like, Marco, please, let's, let's get over with this. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I got to go to bed. I can't do it anymore. Which helped in a way, you know. It if you, with yeah, it does help with emotions a lot. So, yeah. But then, like the the, the day we shot the the fight scene, Hannah and me, we were just like completely we were, over it. We were, <laughs> we were getting really, really crazy, and we were just fooling around and laughing all the time. And, and Marco was really stupid songs. <laughs> and Marco was really angry at us. So then Marco, that was like the only time we really had a fight with Marco because he was just like, you know, you guys can't, you just shut up. We've been shooting for 15 hours now and you can't stop singing and laughing. What the hell is wrong with you? But we were just like, our nerves were wrecked. We were just, the shooting was too long. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that because there, there's a moment on a film like that where you're on location and everything where you, where you almost become the characters or your own equivalent of it. But at some point you can fall out of that envelope because we, we get tired, emotions suddenly fail us in real life. And in the film, of course, that could be deadly. Yeah, well, I had definitely had that. It's always, with me, it's always the same. You know, like for the first two weeks I feel really good and then I have two weeks where I feel like complete shit and I think I'm the worst actor in the world. And then there's the last week where I get sad that the movie's over. So it was the same here, you know. In the beginning, I just loved hanging out with all those people in the hotel. We had fun. Yeah, we were in the flow. And then at some point, I was just like, oh, my God, I can't see anybody anymore. Just spare me, please. And, uh, yeah, but that's kind of hard as the character that I am, you know. I had to be, like, the leader of, 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 the, of the group. And then there were a lot of unexperienced young actors who, who were kind of looking up to me and, like, wanted support from me and... Yeah, and I was just like, I, I was just like, I don't, I don't want to talk with anybody anymore. I just wanna, I just wanna sit here, you know. Don't talk to me. I'm reading. Can't you see that? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. But that's always, you know, I'm, I'm really bad with groups as well. I can't, I, like all those group dynamics. I, I don't, I can't cope with that. So, um, yeah, it got hard in the end. But like, and that's the funny thing. Like in the last week, everything was good again. But like two weeks before the end of the shooting, there were some serious issues going on. <laughs> How do you resolve that? Well, you, there's like no way to resolve that in a way. You just have to wait until it's over. I mean, you you can just close yourself into your room and watch television and don't let anybody in, or you you try to find a secret spot or like a, a silent spot on the set where you can sit with your chair and and just try to. T I mean, I I told some people as well. I, I I just said like, Marlon, please come on, leave me alone. I can't I can't I can't do it anymore. You know, you guys. The thing is, you know, I had to shoot every day, and these guys they had like days off all the time, so they were always pretty relaxed and on the set. Blah, 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 blah. Hey Robert, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm tired. You know, I've, I've worked 16 hours yesterday and the day before that and the day before that and the week before that, and I'm just, oh, I can't do it anymore. So, but you know, Marco also helped there a little, and he, he kind of, kind of blocked them off me a little. And uh, then Jurgen, the guy who's, uh, who's who plays our trainer, he kind of took charge, like was in charge then, and, and kind of looked after those people who were a little troublemakers. We had some troublemakers in, in like in the for the boys. Well, you know, that's like they had some destru destructive energy. Sometimes they they basically tore up the whole hotel in the, at night. You know, the just bowling, bowling alley. Like, I'm not I'm not saying names. But there's some guy who, who, who threw the wall in the ceiling, and there was like a hole in the ceiling and rain coming through in the bowling alley because we had a bowling alley in the hotel. And remember the the, the party in the middle of shooting. 
what we did. <laughs> well, that was us. I mean, that was oh we had like the, 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 the worst whiskey party ever, and yes. we slept and for we, two hours. And we, and we want to drive to Cologne, but we both don't have a driver license. <laughs> and we tried to get into the car, and we tried to get started in it. But <laughs> And we had like we, we only have the the um, rewind. Yeah, uh, I can say. I thought I was in first gear, but it was, it was the rewind gear. And we and sit together, and he said, "No, you have to do another." And it was really fun. Yes. Yeah, the car was broken. Yeah, afterwards. the car was broken. <laughs> Before I get into some biographical stuff for both of you uh, and career stuff, I wanted to, uh, to uh, your character of Toby has these moments like when you sit when you sit in that uh, when you sit in that shower at the, the youth hostel, you know, if you've been thrown out of the room by Akeem, and there's all this stuff about the drunken bowling. There's all kinds of little physical things that is obviously the setup is in the script, but but the execution is for the actor. You've got to actually do something. There's you know there's no dialogue or anything. Talk a little bit about one of those like that shower sequence where you're just so at the the low end of probably your, of the whole your emotional arc in the whole movie. Well, what I do is I work a lot with music. Um, I I have like I basically have like a soundtrack for the whole film set up in my mind, and uh, I have like loads and loads of CDs. I take like I don't know 200 CDs to the set, and I have songs for certain emotions and certain uh, certain scenes. And then I just you know before the shooting, I just sit there for like 10 minutes and listen to those songs. And then I'll go in and, and, and I'll just go with the flow. I don't really, I'm not like a technical actor at all. I just let things happen. It all comes from my own experiences. It's really digging the, the like the, yeah, digging the innermost trash out of your soul and just throw it into the camera. And I do that with with music. I have, I really think a lot about that. I, I make long lists of, of the scenes and I'm like, for this scene I need that song and for this scene I need that, that song and then I'll just sit there with my disc man and listen to music. And some of that winds up in the soundtrack, right? Yeah, some of it winds up in the soundtrack, Not A Serve, and then we have the hidden cameras on it and uh... And there, there's no one song from, 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 my, his from band. my band Kerosene yeah. called Catch Me. Oh, yes, I, <laughs> I had a band called Kerosene, yes, and I play the drums. And my brother we'll wrote... have it again. Yeah, I'll, I'll have it again, yes. And, and we both will have a band together, maybe. Yeah. We try we to. We, yes, we should. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, we have that band called Kerrison, um, and there is the song inside the movie called Catch Me, and I play the drums in that band, and my brother wrote that song. <coughs> yes. And, and, we, and uh, my brother did it before. On the, on the um, uh, Marcus feature we did in front of Summerstorm, my um, brother made the soundtrack of the whole movie. Yes. Describe that movie a little bit. Give it the title. What that movie is about. Oh, okay. Um, uh, it's it's called Guns and Gar. It has an English title as well. Michael, the Eisen Guns and Gar of English. Ah, Breaking Loose. Yes, yes. And it's a movie about yes friendship, um, and and I played a you know I played a really different character as as Malta is in in the movie Summerstorm because I played a straight guy and a and a really shy guy, you know. And yes, he he um, fell into a fight with his best friend because he his best friend called um, Torben had an accident where Torben um, loses his his leg, and after that he fell. He, those those both character both characters fell in, in trouble together, and then they fight uh, um, for for another woman, and then that's you know that's the uh, um, thing of the movie. That sets you up for this role, basically, because Marco knew what you were close you could do. What again? It sets you up for this role because Mark knew what you could do. Basically. Yes, yes. We also did but a movie before that. Mm, yes. Well, before Guns and Cars. Yes, we, we did two movies in front of in front of Summerstorm. Uh, but I think it was a brave brave to to um, let me play that character, even if I think I did it really well. <laughs> yeah. But but yes, I I because it was I told it it was a really big transformation because because um, I played. The guy who I played in the movie before, called uh, um, Breaking Loose, uh, was, you know, totally different to Malta. Because yes. Talk about how you become an actor. Um, when I was young, I, I did theater in Berlin, but really small roles, and and so I always try to to get an actor, but uh, to become an actor. But yes, I I always um, try to um, get on an actor school. There's a really famous one in Berlin called Ernst Busch, but I um, didn't um, um, reach that goal because because I because uh, um, um, I'm how can I say it? I I have the eigenstest not geschafft. You didn't you didn't 
pass the, the yes, I didn't pass the, the mission test of the, that actor school. And after that, um, I made a short movie. Yes, yeah. and with that short movie, uh, um, I go to an agency, and then I met Marco, and we did the first short movie together. And after this, I made uh, Anatomy. It's a it's a um, film released in the United States also, and. Then I was in that business, and it was really cool because because I was able to do um, both things, music and acting. And now I'm in Vienna. Um, um, I study on a famous actor school called Max Reinhardt Seminar. My teacher is Klaus Maria Brandauer, and I I do both. Talk a little about working with him. <laughs> oh, I think he's a tough guy. He's 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 one of the most energetic persons I ever met. He's he's a really cool guy, and I can I'm. You know, he's not um, a typical kind of teacher, I think. He's, it's only about himself. He, he's a really, oh, I don't know how, how to explain, but I can learn really much of, uh, of, of him, from him. What do you get from him? Um, feeling comfortable with your own person personality and use it for everything. It's only about your personality, you know? Don't, don't, uh, um, don't fake it. That's, I think that's the, the most important thing I learned from him. Comes through, it really comes through. Yes. Yeah. Very Where do you come from in Germany? How did you grow up? I've been born in Ber Berlin. Yes, I'm a real Berliner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I love that town. I think it's one of the most interesting towns in Europe. What experience did you have with the wall coming down? You must have been really young. I w uh, yes, I was really young. But but um, in 1990, 90, we uh, um, traveled to to. Uh, um, to the east side of Germany, and I lived there for five years. So I'm not really a West guy. I'm both, you know, because was strange kind of of, What's of the, difference? the difference. Oh, it's hard to explain. I think because um, I hope I'm able to explain it in English. I, I think because um, because the East people were um, locked into such a such a. Um, you know, they, they lived in a, in a, in a, so, you know, it's an eingesperrter Welt, so a, uh, a box. In a, in yes, a, yes. Yeah. Now they try to get more um, uh, liberty than, than, the, than the other people. After the, the wall fell, fell down, the, yeah. the wall broke, um, there was a big um, party scene in the east of, of, of Berlin. Yes, it was really uh, multicultural, so. Yes, but it's strange. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we went to to East East Pro East East Germany. They were really, you know, like they were um, they were nice. If you go shopping or something, they're like, oh, no, no, I don't want to talk to you, and just take it, but go home. Like, and now they're coming into <laughs> another flow. Yes. They were like in jail in some way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe. But now they're free and they live it. Yeah. And I yes, they're not free. They try to be. You know, that's like they're in a different jail on. This jail is capitalism. Yes, that's right. <laughs> but it's another, another issue. Yeah. Yeah. Another very quickly, I don't want to. I don't want to spend a lot of time yes. on that. But a lot of uh, uh, this movie that we that we saw, Goodbye Lenin, gives, gives a certain impression, and you guys may have a different impression. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. If you want, talk about <laughs> about Goodbye Lenin. <laughs> about Goodbye Lenin. I don't want to. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I think the movie's very mainstream and accessible for every like nearly everybody and um, that's a good thing maybe I don't know but I think it's not accurate um, it's a comedy you know it's, it's um it just shows like the the, the basic cliches of Eastern Germany and uh, people yeah and people can laugh about it but um, I did this movie called Sun Alley and I'm not trying to like be a cool guy now to tell that I'm so good and it made the better movie but I'm really I think I made the better movie. I mean, I'm, I only have a very, really small part in that, but this movie is just like, you know, you laugh with the Eastern people, and in Good by Lady, I think you laugh about them, and I don't really like that kind of comedies. So, um, yeah, well, but for an international audience, it's probably it's probably the right thing, because they don't know about the yeah. small, and like, the insider stuff. But with me, I have, like, a connection to the East, because my, my mother is from the East, actually, and she flew in the 70s. And uh, my grandmother lived there all the time, so I visited her when the wall was still up. And uh, yeah, I'm, so for me, it's just like you know, watching Good Boy I'm like, no, it wasn't that way. <laughs> you know, it's not. You're talking about your childhood with the mother. Talk a little bit about how you grew up and where. Well, I I grew up in Austria, 
but like parts of our family lived in the east so I, I would like randomly visit my my grandmother for like a week or two and I'd, I'd be in the in the socialist part of Germany for for like one or two weeks and I don't really have like many memories of that anymore because I was six seven years old I just know it was gray and loud but the people were all nice to me and uh, yeah, like you know I I only read cartoon like cartoon magazines from the east and I, so as a as a child I was really I only read books from the east because my grandmother would give them to me for for like birthday and stuff so I, I kind of had a socialist upbringing actually <laughs> even though my mother hates it because my mother is like really anti-socialist and she's she really has a hard time with me being like pretty I'm, I'm pretty extreme left-wing so if I have discussions about politics with my mother it's it always ends in a big big fight <laughs> <laughs> Talk about growing up in Vienna. Was it Vienna? No, I wasn't in Vienna. I, I came from a really little, well, not even. It's not even a, a town. It's like three farms on a hill. Um, I came, it's like 1,200 meters over, above sea level. So I'm like the typical hillbilly from Austria. <laughs> actually, you know, I, I was growing up in the in the forest. I was I, I had like the biggest playground you can ever have. I grew up on a farm. I had animals around me all the time. It was it was great. But then my par parents divorced, and I. Um, I moved to Berlin with my mother, which was like really a culture shock because, you know, Austrian and German, like you speak German in Austria, but it's it's a completely different language. You know, people don't understand that in Berlin. It's like a really hard, it's not like accents in the in the U.S. where you have like the, a Texan accent or like a New York accent, but you still understand the people. With us, it's like in, Germans don't understand the Austrians. So I was like eight years or nine years old and I went to, this, to, to a German elementary school and I'm like speaking in my accent and they were like, well... Who the fuck are you? What do you want? This was this was really tough, but and I always wanted to go back to Austria, like until I was 14, and then I discovered like the blessings of metropoles, you know, like of Berlin, just to see like living in a big city, which is definitely better than living on the countryside when you're at a certain age. Describe how you got English that way. It's interesting. Oh, you, know, uh, you acquired your English. Which is well, I was I was in an American school for uh, three years. I was in a school before, like uh, on a normal school, and uh, they told me that I should decide between acting and school because they wouldn't let me shoot films anymore. So I said, okay, um, listen, I want to do films. I, don't, I mean, I, I like the school, but still, I, I like acting more. So uh, I tried to find a school in Berlin that would allow me to shoot films, and this American school was the only one, and it was 20,000 euros um, a year, so I had to work a lot. To, to pay for that because my parents don't have any money so yeah and that's where I learned English and um, didn't well I didn't finish it though I don't have any I uh, chance <laughs> I'm sad about it oh yeah oh yes I tend to forget lots of vocabulary I, I used to be really really good in English like for I mean I had every every subject was in English like chemistry and bio, biology bi, biology see I'm, I'm forgetting everything <laughs> and uh, yeah I was really good but how would you describe your English accent? Because it's very, it's, it's not what you think of. I guess it's like continental American or something, because there were a lot of American kids, and so every, like every, all those American accents, they blend into, to, in, into each other, and uh, then this shit comes out. <laughs> so when did you first start acting as a kid? What, what, uh, well, I started dubbing movies when I was 11 or 12, because a cousin of mine did it, and she just took me with her, and they were searching for like little boys who who could like dub uh, Japanese cartoon series and I did that for a long time and then when I was I think 13 there was like this casting agent coming to the, to the, to the studio and uh, looking for boys for a television feature so yeah I've, I went to the casting and got the role and then I was in an agency and uh, it's called Ausweglos like a criminal like a thriller like police thriller thing I don't know. It wasn't. Re I wasn't really good in it, but still, I mean, it was fun. And then I did a lot of stupid series on television, and uh, I hated it. That's where you make money in Germany, right? Is television? Mm, yeah, no. Television, no yeah, definitely. Features, it's yeah. better. It's better than the features. But as soon as I did my first feature, I never. I, I haven't done television again because I'm really. You know, I'm. I'm really trying to do features only because, and it's not just because of the quality. It's also because the work. The working situation is so much better. As a, in a feature, you have like six or eight weeks to shoot it, and with a television movie, it's three to four weeks, and it's just like a different kind of vibe on set. I, features you have really time to act, but yeah. you know that's not important. Maybe sometimes if you make films, 
Television, they don't mind you. Yes. They just need breaks between the commercials. Yes. Yeah. You were telling me last night that you were, you were supposed to be in this film where you played a boxer and you trained for it and everything yeah. didn't happen. Talk a little bit about that. Because you know, we don't really ever hear about the films that never happened. Well, it never happened. No, it wasn't financed. I mean, that's like that's one of those big problems. You know, you get all those great offers and you read those good scripts and you start working on them and then like two months before shooting they say listen uh, I think we'll shoot it next year and then next year nobody calls you and it's just over and gone and that happened so many times and with that it was really because I really started to train boxing and then there was like yeah I mean I'm not I'm not the sporty guy and I really started to work out and stuff like that and uh, then the film didn't happen and then like half a year later like Daniel Brühl shot a film with a with a similar um, subject and I'm like well, that's probably the reason why we weren't financed, shit. But I like our script better. What do we do now? Nothing. Whatever. It's bad luck. <laughs> but that, that, that tells you how actors see their work. We often don't understand what really happens to you guys. You know. You know well, you being an actor is just like it's really, really a hard time. You know, you sit, you sit around at home and you don't have anything to do and you don't know if anything happens. You, you, you look at your bank account and like the money is running out and you're like, shit. And then there's nothing. They, they, I don't get any offers. What am I doing now? Should I like? I don't know, rob a bank or something? I don't know, I, I have to live off something. Or becoming a director. <laughs> yeah, we should become directors. Yes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about your music, how you've got a rock band and how that influences some of the choices you're making as an actor. How, what, what the role of music plays in your life? Well, the role of mu music is definitely, it's definitely like the, the, the bigger part of my life. I'm, I mean, I love acting and I'm, I'm really happy that I found a, like a job that I really enjoy and that that I can do with passion and I can earn money with, but but if I could make the music I make right now and I could make a living of it, which is impossible, I would be the happiest guy in the world, but this will never happen. So what I think is I, I have a, I have a ver very good job that I do with passion and that I love, and it gives me the chance to do a, another thing that is probably my bigger passion without any compromises. So that's that's a great thing. What kind of fan mail have you guys gotten from being in this movie? What reaction from especially younger people in terms of I didn't really get that many fan emails. Like just a, reaction. I had an offer for for a guy who, who wants to marry me. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. That's nice. That's nice. They don't like me. I don't I don't look as good as you. Shit. <laughs> Nobody wants to marry me. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Robert. <laughs> no, yes. I'm serious. It was really funny <laughs> to get uh, such reactions. Well, there were like people telling me that this film, I mean, I was joking. We have a like, big there's, internet there's like really, page. Yeah, that's, that's and, and every day, uh, yeah. um, even yet, even even yet, they wrote so many things about that movie, thanking you, thank you for for this movie because I, I, I felt the same in my when I was younger, and it helps my friend to get through these problems. And so, yes, really, yeah, really, I really have a lot of people telling me that I kind of helped them to come out, yes, which is like, yes. which is really great. I. I usually redirect those emails and stuff to Marco because he's more an more of an expert on that on that theme. But no. there's a lot of people that thank me for playing that role, especially as I'm like in Germany, kind of people know me. You know, I've done films before that were kind of successful. So um, there's like a lot of people in the gay community community who say, I mean, it's just like you know, it's so great that you did that and not just some average actor. But you know, with a name, you 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 stand up for it, and and I think it. It helped a lot that some people, you know, that normally wouldn't go on a movie like that, yes. watch this movie because I was in, yeah, which is great. Yeah, I'm such a good. Yes, because it's like a typical gay movie. Such a good actor. Yeah. We, we were talking. Watch we were the movie. We were talking <laughs> last night at the party. You guys, you said something last night at the party I found interesting because it coincides with something I've been thinking. That when the movie came out, it was uh, it was a hit and it was a kind of bit of a craze in Germany. And then for a time, there was a kind of. Uh, it was hip to be gay for uh, guys you know, for a brief time around this movie. Talk a little bit about that, because I think actually the, the climate of opinion in society is very crucial to what people decide to do, and a movie can sometimes cut across that, even for a brief period of time. Yeah. And we seldom get any, quote, propaganda on the gay side, you know, or, or just yeah. in the normal, your, your life is your own kind of side. Talk a little bit about that reaction. Well, yeah, in Germany, I mean, there was some other stuff that helped us, <laughs> definitely. Sorry. What? No, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it was like uh, at the at the time when our movie came out, like one real, uh, one major politician came out as well, and then there was like <clears throat> we had the, uh, in Berlin a new mayor who was gay, and then in Hamburg the the mayor came out as well. So there was like really a kind of a yeah a, a gay movement in in Germany, and and uh, like 
people like people you consider normal or, or serious in society started to come out and then our film came out and people were like oh well there here it is I mean how gay do you have to be like because everybody was was thinking that you know everybody everybody was basically saying I'm gay now and uh, then there was like this other big big comedy which played with like gay cliches I didn't I didn't really really like that film but still it was a big su success so everybody was talking about that theme and um, I don't know if it changed anything it definitely changed something for young people because they probably had an easier approach for the theme because there was a sensibility anyways in the in the like in the media and in the society that's definitely something that probably helped it wasn't as hard <clears throat> as it normally would have been probably to go to the ticket counter and say hey, please give me a ticket for summer storm you know because what I think is when you're 15 or 16 and and you're like in the, the in a tough peer group where everybody's just like yeah. no we're like cool guys and you go and watch the fag movie uh, I think <laughs> funny situation yeah. I think you will not be brave enough to say I go to summer show yeah. what <laughs> that's wrong with you yeah, man. what's wrong with you <laughs> no hey <laughs> No, I only want to see that movie. <laughs> yeah, and so all the stuff that happened in the media really helped us that the people could go and see the movie yeah. without being like, the scared. And the DVD is out, so they can watch it. Yeah, you can order the DVD via Amazon. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys first think when you saw the movie yourself? The first time you see it, what was your reaction to it? Well, I was, I was basically crying for half an hour straight after I saw the film, yeah, because. Yeah, I, I just put all my heart in that film, and then, you know, I did that before. I, I before I did put all my heart in films, and then they turned out shit because directors kind of screwed it up. And with this movie, just everything was right, and I was just, yeah, hugging Marco and cry. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, go ahead. oh no, yes, I like experience it. as well. You like the movie? Yes, I like the movie. Thank you for this interview. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mr. Koffler. Thank you guys. Very Thank much you. For a break. Yes. Uh,